The mystique of how to do a budget with all the uglies that we all tend to run away from will finally be revealed. We have so far completed parts one and two of our mini-series on managing our personal finances where we covered in part one the initial setup and capturing of your income and expenditure, including the analysis thereof, with a few remedial actions to be taken. And then in part two, we discuss different ways and means of changing our old thinking habits to a smarter shopping ideology to reduce our expenditure further. Today, we now move on to the next step in drafting a budget to set up our blueprint or plan to change our negative situation into a positive one and to get us to the stage of eventually building up our savings plus lots more. Coming up. Greetings and welcome back to my channel. Tim here again with another How To With Basics, bringing you this time a continuation of our mini-series on managing your personal finances and covering all the steps needed to ultimately get you to that stage of budgeting to save money. As I mentioned in part one, the word budgeting is not some mystical rocket science and you don't need to be an accountant to do it as you only need the basics of some understanding with respect to how to add, subtract, multiply and divide. And if you can do that, well, you don't have a problem. There's always a calculator that you can always use, so there isn't a problem there anyway. So there's no restriction in you being able to do that. In this video, I probably We'll be talking maybe a little bit slower due to the subject matter as you need to be able to hear clearly and to follow me precisely as there's going to be a lot of information that you will need to absorb. Okay, a budget is merely a plan or a blueprint or call it your plan on where your money is going to be coming from and where you will be spending it and eventually getting you to the stage of you allocating monies towards a savings account. Once again, the basis of this subject matter is extremely easy once of course you get into it. However, initially it will sound very complicated and a little frightening, but this is something that you have to do and need to get into a habit of doing for the rest of your life. If you get lost anywhere, then please save the video and play it back again or pause it when and where necessary. In such event that you still have some difficulty, some difficulty with this, then please feel free to message me or email me and I'll gladly help you further. By now, you have been following this series from the start and you would have already created your income and expenditure by now and already got a good feel of it, plus gained a little experience in following my advice to reduce some of that expected deficit. Okay, I assume that if you're still here with me, you've chosen to continue listening and making more positive changes in your personal finances so that you can afford to pay that next unexpected bill, plus building up your savings account. Great. Let's jump into it, shall we? The main prerequisite for a budget and save money is that you will have either a weekly or monthly income that comes in on a regular basis. If not, then basically you will not be able to do a budget at this stage, as it's all about offsetting planned projected expenses against an income. I know that many of you have only just started putting an income and expenditure together over the last fortnight, fortnight, which of course is wonderful. However, we are going to need a lot more information to enable us to draft our first budget. 
So I'm going to ask you to try and go back as far as you can, ideally the last 12 months. If not, then over the last few months. But bear in mind, the further that you can go back, the more accurate your initial budget will be. Failing which, we'll have to work with a few estimates. A budget is not cast in stone and is a pliable working document or a spreadsheet and will need changing and amending at least once a year, if not more, to achieve your ultimate goals. Back to your past expenditure. Here I'm talking about prior to you starting your recent income and expenditure from our part one of this series. Hence, I'm going to assume the worst and guess that you have no receipts. If so, then don't worry, we can try and work around that. Okay, then can I assume that you have a banking account with at least one debit card? If not, that's also maybe not the end of the world. It would, however, make a job a little bit more difficult, but we can also try and work around that one. Let's discuss those last two points in a bit more detail. Your income that we will be using initially will be your actual take-home pay. Now, that is your gross salary or wages minus what your employer has deducted from you, such as your tax or PAYE, PRSR, UIF and pension deductions, etc. Now, each country has different uh, terminology for those deductions. Now, this then becomes your actual net money or net wages or net salary that you will receive either as cash in hand or what is deposited into your banking account either weekly or monthly. Now, please bear with me on the following question as they are all extremely relevant to how we are going to be capturing our data and doing our calculations. So I suggest you make a few notes as we go along. Firstly, is your income, that is your wages, weekly or monthly paid? Secondly, is your income fixed, that is the same every week or every month, or does it vary? If it does vary, is the variation controlled and predictable over a number of weeks, months, or maybe seasons? Now, this is important. If you are weekly paid, then set your template up basing all of your calculations on weekly amounts. Or alternatively, if you are monthly paid, then all your calculations have to be based and set up on a monthly figure or amounts. Okay, so under your income page, record your net salary, that is your take home pay after all deductions. If your salary varies from week to week or month to month, I would suggest that you record, record the lowest net income. However, you can record the variables separately, such as under subcategories, such as extra work, second part-time job, overtime, commission, and or bonuses. Obviously, over a period, such as quarterly, half yearly, etc., you will have a running total of all your income, which you can, in most cases, get off your pay slip, as that normally will show you a year-to-date figure. Thus, once you divide each of those totals by the length of the period in question, this is where it becomes critical to know how you will be setting up your template page, be it weekly or monthly, as you will be dividing those figures by the actual number of weeks or months. Now, by dividing that out as discussed, you will then establish an average net income either per week or per month, which is what you need to use now as your average income for your calculation purposes. Okay, are you still with me? Let me try and explain that in a little bit more detail. As I said previously, 
regarding setting up your template as either weekly or monthly if say you do it monthly you then need to take your total net basic earnings excluding the add-ons such as overtime etc for that period say for example 12 months and divide it by the total of num um, total number of months in this case being 12 then you will have your average per month income now if doing it weekly then you need to divide that total which you did by 12 previously but then you need to divide that answer by a further 4.33 now why do i say 4.33 this is because there is 4.33 weeks in the average month okay to substantiate those for those that don't understand we know that there are 52 and a quarter weeks per year thus for financial calculation purposes we always round it down to 52 okay so we then divide 52 weeks per year by 12 being the total number of months per year we then get 4.33 weeks per month thus we I get the 4.33 figure from as you are now dealing with our income here I would highly recommend that you always use the lower or round down your average figure to the nearest in such event that any income is not guaranteed over the next 12 months I would highly recommend leaving it out of your initial calculations as that would be your bonus later on if and when you receive it okay once you've done that on your fixed wages or income write that average income down or enter it into your spreadsheet now you can repeat this process using the same calculations again for your overtime and or other variable earnings but only if you receive it on a regular basis okay once you've done that write it down and enter that also into your spreadsheet then add the two or more figures together and you will then have your total average weekly income okay if you have any questions here and you're still a little lost either replay that part of the video or please put your questions in the comment section below or email me and I'll happily talk you through it. If we're all good so far, then we can move on to our expenditure. Now, make a list of all your outgoings and here I refer to whatever you spend your money on. If those of you who followed part one of this mini series, you will already have your template drawn up with the full list of categories and subcategories with actuals already entered into your expenditure page. Now, for those who didn't watch part one, then I strongly recommend that you do, as you will be totally lost from this point onwards. Then, after you have watched it and followed through with it, plus retrieving the sample list I supplied of the categories and subcategories, then come back and watch this part three. Now, the hard part is entering all the figures, especially if you have no receipts or records, which obviously you won't have all the figures that, of course, we're going to be looking for. If you followed part one, you will only have, say, the last fortnight and maybe a little bit more of what you actually spent over that period. What we ideally need is the last 12 months, but as I previously said, we'll try and work around that if you don't have it. Here you can, for starters, pull out your bank statements and work through them. You'll see every debit transaction which you will need to try and decipher what it was for and jot it down under its relevant category or subcategory and whatever week it was spent in. Hence, you can number your weeks from 1 to 52, being the number of weeks in the year. Once you have worked through your bank statements,
balance for the last 12 months and split every debit transaction into its correct subcategory and its week or month spent, then add each subcategory separately for that entire period, namely 52 weeks or the 12 months. Now, remember what I told you in part one. Your category totals will be the total of all its subcategory totals, thus not forgetting to cross-check your totals to ensure that they are the same. Okay, now we will have a list of categories and subcategories with their individual totals. Now, if you calculate in everything monthly, you will divide each of your category and subcategory annual totals by 12. Thus will give you your average spend per month. If doing it weekly, then divide your category or subcategory annual totals by 12, as we've just done, and then by a further 4.33, or by 52, thus giving you your average spend per week. Now, whilst going through your bank statements, you will come across some, some transactions that you pay only monthly, such as your electricity or utility bill, rent, etc. So here, if you're doing your books monthly, you technically will have 12 of those transactions. Thus, the total for the 12-month period, you will simply divide that by 12, giving you your average spend for those transactions or category per month. And if you're doing it weekly, you will divide that by a further 4.33, giving you an average weekly cost. Now, enter those average figures into your spreadsheet. The same rule will apply to other transactions that you may only pay quarterly and or annually. You need to do the same as we discussed previously by totaling them for the year and then dividing them out for either your monthly and or weekly averages. An example, say you pay your car insurance annually. Then divide that by 12 to give you your average cost of insurance per month or by 52 to give you your average cost per week. Now, <laughs> I know you may have a question here, so write it down as I will be addressing that question that you're thinking. Trust me, I'm the oracle and I know exactly what you're thinking at the moment, but please just bear with me. Okay, moving on. I appreciate that what you are going to have at this point is going to be a little bit hit and miss situation. As other transactions such as all your cash payments, etc., you of course will never remember what you spent those on. But remember, you have made a positive step forward and change is not going to happen overnight. As you have, after all, been doing it all wrong for so long. And that reprogramming your head to get into a new habit never comes easy. But don't despair, stick with it and your situation will change. The more you of course get into it and the more detailed information that you accumulate over time and capture. Hence the reason why I said that your budget is a pliable document that you will need to update and amend a few times a year. Now, once all your weekly or monthly figures have been entered into your spreadsheet, I now want you to add all your new average income up with a total, and then do the same with all your average expenditure to also get a total. Now try and think of any other expense that you had, or normally have had, that you possibly paid cash for. Look back at my list of categories and subcategories and ask yourself if you incurred an expense during the year for any of those. Now, you may have others that are of course not in my list. Write them down and take a fairly accurate guess of how much that was. Then repeat the whole previously mentioned process 
with totaling and then dividing them out to break those also down to a monthly or a weekly figure. Now, once you believe that you have captured all of your actual and estimated expenses, then you need to minus your new average weekly or monthly income from your new average weekly or monthly expenditure, similar to what you did with your income and expenditure statement. You basically have got to have a zero difference. Now, allow me to explain. Let's go back to that question you had earlier. You probably questioned, why divide out an annual or an expense that you only pay once a quarter or once a year down to a monthly or weekly expense and have to enter that into your weekly or monthly figures? Well, that's a good question. The answer is very simple. We need to know what our estimated total annual cost or expenditure is or will potentially be. As remember, this budget is our tool to plan for those expenses to ensure that we have sufficient income to cover all of those expenses, failing which we'll get into trouble or debt if we haven't allocated funds to cover those expenses. Hence the reason for breaking all the expenses down to either a weekly or a monthly figure. Do you now understand this? The end result has to be that our projected annual income has to cover at least the total annual projected or budgeted expenditure. Now, by us breaking it down to an average per month or per week, we can then quickly see, as if having a crystal ball, if our average income is more or less the average expenditure, thus giving us an insight 12 months in advance of where we will be in a year's time, thus affording us the opportunity to take the necessary remedial action now to circumvent any potential future financial disaster. It is called allocating part of your income to every possible expense that you will and almost likely will incur so that when that bill comes in, you will have the funds available to cover it. Now, I will address such outcomes and actions later on, so please continue bearing with me on this. When you first do this, you will find that you are going to once again have similar to what you had when you did your income and expenditure statement, being either a surplus or a negative situation. If you have a positive surplus or an equal answer, then trust me, most of you wouldn't be here or you wouldn't have a financial problem or you didn't, of course, capture all your figures. However, if you do have a surplus and you're still sticking around, then good. That surplus has to then be transferred into a savings account to cover those expenses that are still to come in later on during the year. I would say that at this stage, most of you will be seeing quite a large minus or negative difference or a deficit as they call it. Hence the reason for your current financial situation. Now, ideally, as I said previously, you need to have a surplus or a minimal result of equal or a balanced zero result. Bear in mind, that you will obviously not be paying all those budgeted average expenses out each week or each month. Hence, whatever that surplus is at the end of each week or month as budgeted, you will then need to transfer those unused funds into another account, ideally a short-term savings account. Thus, when those bills do come in, you then don't have to scratch to find the money as you have now allocated or budgeted for them. And you would have been saving that money to cover those bills. Now, let's now address the potential deficit situation 
and put an action plan into place. Here we are once again going to repeat what we did in our income and expenditure cut. But this time we have to cut your expenses further as we need to now not only cover the day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week expenses, but we need to also put aside the inflated budgeted monies needed to cover those expenses that have to be paid monthly, quarterly and or annually. This becomes the main reason for having a budget. And secondly, it is there to assist us to cover our medium to long-term expenses and or savings. By now, your budget will show you what your average income per week and or per month is, plus what your budget ex expenses are. Now, whatever the outgoings or budgeted expenses are, that is exceeding the income bar, then the amount of monies that you have to cut your expenses by. Is this making any sense? <laughs> are you still with me at this stage? I know that none of us want to share this, but there are no options here and you have no choice but to cut or reduce your expenses by that weekly or monthly average deficit amount. If not, your financial situation will worsen week on week till such time that you are in so much debt that you will eventually be evicted from your home. You don't want to be like treading water when you are in quicksand. Now, in view of what I've just said, I want you to please listen very carefully. And I'm only thinking about you at this point in time. The only one here is you who are watching and me who is currently talking and nobody else. And I don't want to end this video until I feel confident that you are 100% with me. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I want you to know that you are not alone and I'm happy to guide you through this difficult situation that you probably need a lot of help and guidance. I'm sorry to give you this wake up call, but is it not better knowing in advance than till it's too late? Hence the beauty of this lesson and getting taught on how to manage your personal finances as without this basic new life skill, you will continue battling through life gaining little to nothing or relying purely upon luck. Now, none of us want this to happen. So whether we like it or not, it is time to cut your cloth according to your income. And as we have been forewarned by our very own tools that we now have control over, we can now remedy the problem. Okay, pause the video and possibly take some time out for another extra strong mug of coffee. Okay, I assume you're back. I urge you to now sit back and relax for a few minutes. If you're married or partnered, it is always advisable to do this entire exercise with your partner so that both of you are aware of the situation. And please do not say, don't worry, we have always managed before. Forget that and get that sort of thinking out of your heads now. You now need a plan to work to and that plan is sitting right in the front of you. It's called your actual income and expenditure statement and the other is called your budget based on your income and your expenditure. Hence you now need to fix it. Once again, please relax. Take a deep breath and keep a calm, level head, as without that, you will not find the answers. I'm going to take you through a couple of options to help you. And only then can you decide which ones and if they are possible and achievable in your circumstances, as you know your situation better than anyone else. Okay, let's address your income. Now, this is one way to help reduce the deficit. Our options are as follows. Firstly, can you or your partner get extra hours at work? Secondly, what are your options on finding a second after-hour job, be it babysitting, cutting lawn,
packing shelves in the lo local supermarket, or even an after hour delivery driver's job. Thirdly, finding another job with a higher rate of pay. Fourthly, try and think outside of the block as you may come up with other ideas, but please, whatever you do, it must be legal. If not, you will end up in a worse off situation. Okay, let's chat over some ideas to now reduce your expenditure, as these will be easier to implement and a lot sooner with faster results. If you go back on this mini-series, I have already discussed some of the ways to reduce your expenditure. So, I suggest please revisit and replay all these videos to recap on them and start making notes as you will need to implement the majority of those. Create an action plan. I want to touch on a few other options that you could have here, such as 1. Consider your options on downgrading or downsizing your home. Can you find a cheaper home without increasing your travel expenses? However, you will need to balance the one against the other. And if at the end it does save you a reasonable amount, then seriously consider it. I can already hear you say, but that will cost me money to do, to do such, such as moving, etc. Remember, at times we need to spend money to make money, or in this case, we need to spend a bit of money to save money, medium to long term. Secondly, if you are single, then see if you can move back into the family home with your parents, or consider a house share, or rent a spare room out that you may have. Thirdly, the same goes for your car reassess its average monthly cost versus an alternative car. But bear in mind that if you consider an older car, it will also be increasing your maintenance cost. You need to weigh all those options up. Move on to fourthly. If you are single and without kids, ask yourself if you can go without a car for a while, use a bike or use public transport till such time as you are back on your feet. Fifthly, we now need to also revisit all your past expenses and seeing what you can cut as you have no options now, but to cut big time. Repeat that exercise that we did when we first put our income and expenditure statement together in part one. But this time you have now, a bigger target is you have to cut to meet your average annual expenses and not just your usual weekly or monthly ones. Six, lastly, if you have current bank loans that you are paying off, and by now you have a good idea of my views on the banking institutions, however, we need to look past that. In this case, if you've got a loan, then you have to arrange a meeting with your bankers and all your lenders to renegotiate your terms to lower your current weekly and or monthly repayment amounts. This will help to reduce your monthly outgoings and ease that noose around your neck just a little. But it will obviously lengthen your repayment period and interest payable and you will need to unfortunately live with that, as that is going to become the compromise here. Now once you have made all those proposed cuts and changes, you will start to see some benefits appearing in your weekly and or monthly income and expenditure statement or document that of course you are updating continuously. After a couple of months, you will also start to see a new trend appearing. I would then suggest that you revisit your budget and amend it now with the new figures, as that will be your yardstick to measure where you will be in, say, 12 months time. I can almost guarantee you that if you made all the efforts and cuts, 
you will be pleasantly surprised by the new results in your budget. Adding to that, every spare penny that you have at the end of each week, put it into a savings account to cover those expenses that are still to come in later on in the year. Remember, to revisit and update your budget at least a few times a year, if not quarterly. Now, as soon as you are back on your feet, do not go back to your old ways. I want you to please put another expense into your budget. This time, you are going to budget for a job crisis. Job crisis. We need to save a minimum of, say, 10% of your net income to go into that special crisis savings account that you do not touch. This savings account will only be touched or used if you lose your job or it becomes a little added bonus when you eventually go on pension. The guideline here is you need a backstop crisis savings equivalent to at least six months net income. Remember, if your net income increases, then this savings account amount needs to be topped up by the new net six monthly income figure. Once you have this in place, you will have now at least six months grace to find another job without any pressure on how you're going to cover your monthly expenses. This is like having your own self-insurance. If this ever happens, then this savings account has to be topped up again for future reference. Now, once you have that in place and you have the equivalent of six months salary locked away, you now need to open up another savings account and put that same 10% or whatever you can squeeze into the second account as this one can be for either future college fees, new furniture, your next car, or even that well-deserved holiday away. Once you reach that stage, guys, you are then very welcome to contact me to guide you a little bit further of what to then do. My ending thoughts are, we make our bed, we lie in it. Nothing in life is impossible. Everything is negotiable. You now have the tools and the power, so take control of your income and expenditure. If you ever borrow money, always negotiate your terms and dates that you will pay. And if ever you can't make a payment, always be proactive and advise the creditor and agree upon an action plan with them. If you ever forfeit any of those agreements and promises, your name then becomes tarnished and your credit rating ceases to exist and potentially along with everything else. This now brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. I do hope that you've learned something new here today and if so, please leave a comment below as your feedback is important in improving the overall quality of material being presented. If you know someone that could benefit from this video, then remember, caring is sharing, as your help and support is really appreciated. Now please, don't forget to click the thumbs up, like button below, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time with another How To With Basics video. Bye.